Hi everybody, it's Big Anklevich. Did you miss me? It's kind of been a long time, but uh, since the last time I did an ankle cast, but here I am driving to work and doing an ankle cast. How about that? Um, kind of the reason why I wasn't doing my ankle cast for the last little while is just I felt a little nervous to be uh, not uh, to, to be talking and not paying enough attention to whether there was cops behind me or not. <laughs> because my registration, as I think I mentioned in one of my earlier uh, uh, angle casts, my registration is expired on my car. It was expired, I should say. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it's been a while. For a, for a while, we didn't have the money. I looked at, you know, it was going to cost me almost 200 bucks to get it registered. And I was like, ah, I don't have that money right now. And so I just kind of was lazy and didn't do anything about it. And I just let it go and I let it go. And it got to the point where I, you know, didn't even think about it. I would go weeks and weeks at a time without even thinking, oh crap, my car isn't registered still. Um, but uh, not too long ago, and I think I mentioned this on uh, the ankle cast, a uh, uh, highway patrolman pulled me over and gave me a warning. He said, hey dude, you need to get your registration done because, you know, seriously, and I like acted like I'd completely forgotten. When he pulled me over, I knew why he pulled me over, but I acted like I'd completely forgotten, and I wound up getting a warning instead of a ticket from him, which I guess is good, because, uh, you know, I already couldn't afford it, but I knew at this point that I was probably in, in for it. My car was doing this thing and the other thing and that thing, and I was hoping that these things might not be necessary to be registered, but I was wrong. So as soon as this uh, highway patrolman pulled me over, I rushed over to the uh, the local place and I got my car tested. The two tests, you have to do the safety inspection and the emissions test to be able to register your car. And my car failed both tests. I had to get a new windshield because the stupid little crack on my windshield that I'd gotten was now too long for, uh, you know, for safety or whatever. And my uh, the axle on my car made this clicking noise and they were telling me that, you know, it clicks so it fails because that's what it says in the thing, you know. The funny thing is you can have the, the axle, you know, can have all sorts of play on it, you know, wiggle all over the place. That's okay, but if it clicks, then it fails. So I was basically screwed by having the only thing that could be wrong with your axle that would cause you problems uh, in the safety test. And so yeah, I had to get that done. And the engine light was on on my car because of a um, because of a, a, a sensor. It said, uh, I can't remember what the name of the sensor was, the cam, not the cam position, the crankshaft position sensor or something like that, uh, this sensor was on. And apparently if your engine light is on in any way, you will fail the emissions test. It doesn't even matter about your emissions, it's just something completely different. So I had to get this fixed. Now this was the thing I think I've, I've mentioned, I, t I talked about it all the way back on the That Gets My Goat where I talked about when the mountain by our house was caught on fire and we were evacuated and we drove back to the house to get some stuff and then my car wouldn't start and we're like ah that's what my car has been doing for a long time where it just picks and chooses when it wants to start and when it doesn't and recently it's gotten really bad where I go out to start it and I basically have to sit for 20 minutes trying and then finally okay now I'll start and it goes um, now all this stuff added up uh, was going to be like a thousand dollars almost to get fixed. And I, when I saw that after being pulled over by the highway patrol, I just thought, oh, come on, a thousand dollars? Is it even worth it to fix this car for a thousand dollars? And so for a while, me and my wife debated and I just thought, well, maybe I can just, I mean, I've gone four months already without getting my registration renewed and I've only been pulled over once so maybe I can just keep doing this until we can afford to get rid of this car and buy a new one 
And so that was kind of our plan. But just last Tuesday, I got pulled over again. And this time the uh, policeman was saying, hey, I'm giving you a ticket for not having your registration done. And really, you, you need to do something to get this taken care of because, uh, because, you know, if the highway patrol pulls you over, they're probably just going to impound your car. And then it'll cost you like 250 bucks to get it out of the impound. It'll cost you $25 a day for every day that it sits in the impound. You have to register your car to get it out of the impound, so on and so forth. And I just thought, geez, how could I even register my car when it won't pass the test? Maybe I just need to just turn over the pink slip to them once they impound it. But yeah, so this started getting me worried. I talked to my wife and what we wound up doing, which sucks, is we had to take a freaking loan out of her 401k to be able to pay to get the car fixed because we didn't have all the money it would take. So we took this loan out of her 401k and uh, I started on the odyssey that was getting my car fixed enough that I could register it. It took several days. I was hoping. I actually took a day off work and I went in there and uh, had them fix that problem, the, the sensor, and they fixed the axle. And uh, the window, the windshield guys couldn't come. They didn't do windshields at the car place, but a windshield company was gonna come and do it, but they couldn't come until Monday. So I tried to find someone else that could do it right away and was unable to uh, manage to get that taken care of. Uh, the guys took so long on my car that I didn't even get it back Friday night. I had to go and get it Saturday morning after uh, I went jogging with my brother-in-law and then I had to have him drop me off at the car place to pick up the car. And then the car still wouldn't start got it home and it wouldn't start and the guy at the car place said hey you know your starter it, it looks like your starter is also going you may want to fix that here pretty soon because uh, it looks like I mean I know you spent a lot of money already so maybe you can hold off until later but you're gonna want to fix that soon but of course when my car didn't start the engine light came right back on and so it wouldn't pass the emissions test and without the windshield still wouldn't pass the safety test so I still couldn't get my car registered and I was just freaking out I was just like oh my gosh I, I'm afraid to get my car impounded I'm tired of driving around looking in my rearview mirror watching for cops and just you know changing lanes whenever they come nearby trying to get as far away from them as possible so they won't notice that my sticker is the wrong color on my license plate um, so my wife had Monday off and she took the car in to get the starter fixed so that the car would start. While we had it there, they managed to get the window glass people to come out and do the windshield. And so, yeah, when I was done with that, they're like, okay, now your car starts and the, the engine light is off. We cleared that. Now you have to drive it for like 100 miles, you know, 50 to 100 miles. To make sure that the engine light doesn't come back on and then we can retest you for free and so here I am with the car on Tuesday and I have my, <laughs> my one last commute to work where I'm going to work and I'm hoping beyond hope that uh, I don't get pulled over and given an, an impounded not just given a ticket I already got a ticket I did find out that my ticket for not having my registration was gonna cost me 40 bucks. So that's good. My wife actually messed with me. She called me up, she's like, yeah, we got your uh, thing, your ticket's gonna be $450. And I was like, what, you're not serious. Luckily she wasn't because, oh my gosh, when I was shot myself, just eating a bullet right there is what I would have done. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we got that. That's more money on top of everything else. But uh, yeah, I drove to work and drove home and I kept an eye on my uh, rear view mirror, watched for cops everywhere I went. And I managed to get to and from work without getting pulled over one last time. And then this morning, I got up early and I actually skipped running. Normally I run every uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
Today was Wednesday. I skipped it um, because I wanted to be at the, the car place the first thing, you know, when they opened the doors. I want to be the first guy so they could do my emissions test, pass me off, and get me out of there. With the window done, I had my safety inspection passed. So all I had left was the emissions, and then I would be able to finally register my car. And uh, so, yeah, I got that test. I passed. I, I went home, and I was very careful driving to and from the uh, car shop, too. Um, managed to get home safely without being pulled over one last time. And, and I hopped on the computer and was able to do the, uh, the Renewal Express of my uh, registration and my car is now at last registered to be driven. So I feel comfortable, I feel safe being out driving again. I'm not looking over my shoulder all the time hoping that somebody isn't gonna pull me over. The funny thing about driving um, without my registration is I learned to uh, drive very law-abidingly, I guess. <laughs> That's not a word, obviously, but uh, I kept right at this. I would set my cruise control for the speed limit. I used to always set it for like five over because I figure a cop won't pull me over for going five over. But I don't even want him to look at me anymore. So I was going right at or even below the speed limit everywhere I went. And uh, I suppose that's a good thing, right? I mean, I'll try and keep that up, I guess. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I went five months with an unregistered car and barely got pulled over at all. So, you know, abiding by the law, I guess, is a good thing. Um, imagine if I'm not unregistered. I'll probably never get pulled over my entire life. Uh, anyways, so now I'm able to breathe easy, breathe deep. Um, and uh, I, I feel good. It's a huge weight off my shoulders. I would, I swear, my stomach would be tight in knots every day as I would go to get in my car because A, I knew it wouldn't start, uh, so I'd be sitting there forever, and then B, I knew that I'm running the risk of being pulled over everywhere I go and getting a $40 ticket at least. Um, but now I don't have to worry about that. That's the reason why I didn't do ankle casts for so long. I was just nervous to have headphones in, a microphone going, and then, you know, some cop sees me. And then I got to pull all this junk off and act like, well, um, what's the problem, officer? Uh, so, <laughs> so now I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. So anyways, that's been like a huge... Like, a, just a huge pain for so long. Like, there's been several times, and maybe we've mentioned it, I don't know if we've ever mentioned it on the show or not. There's several times where me and Rish have gotten together, and, you know, usually he's coming from down south, and I'm coming from my job, which is up north, and we'll meet somewhere in the middle, where we usually meet is like a target, uh, you know, and he'll, he'll go in and check for toys. Uh, action figures if they got good ones and uh and then you know we'll go and have our little pre-game meal uh that we usually call it at uh various places these days we used to always be at wendy's but now we've kind of widened our palate um but uh yeah we'd meet there and i'd park my car in that target and then we'd go to leave and my car wouldn't start and it just wouldn't ever start and i'd just We'd, have, we'd wind up having to leave it there. There's been more than once where we just had to leave it and go and do stuff and record for a while and then come back and try it again when, uh, when the night is over. And usually, luckily, by then it'll start again. But, but now it just starts up every time. It's so amazing. You know, it's funny that you, you never think about that when normally, you know, you just expect your car to start. Uh, but when it doesn't start all the time, you get to the point where you, you expect it not to, and then it does. Oh my gosh, it's like the heavens have parted and the light, the rays of light come streaming down, and uh, it's just really awesome. 
and this guy just totally cut me off. He didn't even look in his blind spot. He just tried to run me off the road. Thank you, sir. Didn't even wave once he realized that I was there. Maybe he never did. Nice. Anyways, uh, yeah, so at last I'm driving in my car with a non-heavy heart, a non, no fear. Um, so today's ankle cast is going to be, uh, aside from that giant rambling endless story that I just told, it's going to be a little different because uh, Rish was getting on my case for not having done an ankle cast. Um, and so I have gotten started on doing an ankle cast, but what, I don't know what I'm saying. That has nothing to do with anything. Rish has gotten on my case for not doing an ankle cast, and so... What he did to try and get me going was he emailed over a bunch of questions that he wanted me to answer on the next ankle cast. So I printed them out, have them here in front of me, and while I'm driving, I will do my best to answer them. His first question is, how is your running coming? Uh, my running is coming fairly good. Uh, I didn't run to this morning, obviously, as I confessed, which it's the first time I've missed a day in a very long time. On Monday, I went out running, and it had snowed overnight. Oh, my gosh. I wish spring would, you know, really take over and just say, okay, I'm here. And we're going to have weather that's in the 40s to the 60s uh, for a good two months. And you won't have to worry about any snow. Um, but, yeah, it had snowed overnight. I went running anyways. But this morning I didn't because I had to do this uh, whole registration thing. Um, but I'll be back out there again tomorrow. I've been having problems with shin splints, uh, which is, I don't know if, you, if you've never had them, it's like a, a just a serious pain that kind of comes up your shins. Um, and people will get them when they're running. Uh, I, I went uh, and talked to these people at this running store um, because I'd heard that you could get maybe insoles that might help. Um, and so they gave me these insoles that are, you know, have a lot of support in your arches for people, I believe they call it someone who pronates, which is like your, your, your foot turns kind of towards the inside every time you step. Um, not pigeon-toed turned, but, you know, like turns it, it angles or whatever you want to say. Um, so I have these insoles and I put them into my shoes and oh my gosh, it just makes it way worse. My shin splints hurt like crazy now. Um, I used to run three miles every morning and uh, was doing longer runs on the weekends, but it, it hurts so bad when I run in these shoes now that I can barely make it like one mile for the first little while, you know, he says that you're supposed to get used to these insoles. You wear them and you you get your feet used to it and, and they'll be uncomfortable to begin with, but eventually it'll go away. Um, and I guess maybe that's possible that it, it, that will happen. Uh, he says to give, the guy at the store said to give it the full 30 days. I can actually take them back if they don't work, um, which is a good thing because they cost 35 bucks just for friggin' insoles. But, uh, and those are the cheapest ones too. Um, but he said uh, to try them out for the full 30 days before you give up on them because it takes a while to get used to them. And maybe that's the case. I don't know when I first started wearing them, they were just unbearable. I would go running in them and I had to bring my old running shoes that I haven't been wearing for a long time. I'd bring them down with me and like just leave them in the grass and then I'd run just a mile and then come back and, uh, and then I would change shoes, and then I would try and run two miles uh, the next day and then change shoes, and I was trying to ex expand it, and then I finally stopped bringing the other shoes, and I'm just running in the ones with the insoles, but gosh, they hurt so bad I can't get past two miles every day. I go running and I, I find myself having to stop and walk because my feet are just killing me, my legs are just killing me, and on my long run days, on Saturdays, um, I've just not even tried. I've just been wearing my uh, 
my old shoes the whole time so that I can manage. Um, I actually had to run eight miles this last Saturday and I ran in my old shoes and I was fine. My shins barely hurt the entire time. So I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that maybe these insoles were, will go. I may just have to throw them out and just get new shoes and forget about the insole thing. Um, Rish's next question says, you tried showing me a running compilation video the other day, but I was spared. Did that work out? Where can fans see it now? Yeah, I had the video done and I was going to show it to Rish and my wife and family at the same time because I finished it that day. So when they all showed up, I was like, oh, let me show it to you. But the unfortunate thing was um, it was in a video codec that nothing that I own can read. Um, I uploaded that to YouTube and YouTube, you know, converts it to whatever their codec is and then it uh, it can be seen by anybody um, but at the time that I was trying to show it to Rish uh, it was uh, I couldn't show it so now it's online I actually posted it I, I put in a bunch of tags usually I don't because I don't want my stuff to be viral I don't think that this video will be viral either but I try and really avoid anyone seeing uh, videos like I'll post vi family videos that I put on my family blog and I don't want a bunch of strangers looking at it so I will leave it as unmarked as possible um, but this particular video I put all the tags I could think of for it and all that stuff and I posted it on Facebook and I posted it on Twitter and I posted it on uh, on the blog and I think it may have even gone out on Google Plus. I don't know. I haven't logged into Google Plus in so long that I wouldn't really know. But I did see a thing on YouTube where it said that my stuff was automatically sent to Google Plus. So I think it went to Google Plus too. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I got my video posted. Um, so it's kind of like an inspirational video. Basically what I've been doing is when I go running, I take my camera and I get a video of myself just like a four or five second video of myself running and then I've I've made kind of a compilation where it's counting down the miles I've been counting the miles my goal is to run uh, 500 miles this year and so this first video was the first 100 miles of the 500 and uh, you know it's got a little intro and it's got some inspirational music and I think it's pretty cool um, despite it just being me running around, it's still pretty cool, pretty inspirational, pretty neat. Uh, it's kind of weird. I posted it, and I swear within the hour of posting it, there was that uh, bombing at the Boston Marathon. Um, it, it, it's just kind of freaky when stuff like that. I post a running related video and then a running related event has a tragedy. Um, it's almost like there's a Dune Steve curse because I remember I was talking with Rish about it. We mentioned Margaret Thatcher when we were talking about the triple word score. You know, she was one of the three words that we mentioned. And then, like, the next week, Margaret Thatcher was dead. Um, and I think the same thing happened with Neil Armstrong. We mentioned him, and then before we even got the episode out, he died. And so maybe we're cursing people by even mentioning them. I don't. I guess we mentioned enough people that that's probably not the case. But did I curse the Boston Marathon by putting out a running-related video? I don't know. I hope not. Um, but yeah, I am planning on running all 500 miles this year I figure that I'll probably make that easy uh, I'm more likely that I'll get to somewhere around 750 before the year is over but uh, but yeah because I'm preparing to do a marathon I'm planning on doing a marathon in uh, September and so as part of my training I'm, I'm doing this I'm trying to get 500 miles and 
and uh, yeah, you can check out my progress on my video. Um, Rish asks, when is this half marathon you have paid to enter happening? The half marathon will be on June 15th. That's the one that I've already paid for. The marathon I haven't paid for just in case. I mean, I don't, I don't want to put the money down just yet, just in case, like, I don't know, you know, my shin splints get so bad that I wind up in a cast or something. It would really suck to have blown the hundred dollars or whatever it takes to enter one of those things. Um, before, you know, I can. So, and I also kind of wanted to see just how well I do. I think I will be able to manage it. I think I can make the 26.2 miles. I ran eight miles on Saturday and it wasn't that bad. So I think with all the training that I'm planning on doing over the next uh, months to come, I think I will make it. Um, so June 15th, you can watch for that. Uh, what do you think about when you go running, he asks. Um, nothing in particular. My mind just kind of wanders all over the place, which I think is a good thing. I remember once mentioning that I would use my drives to work as times to think about stories um, so that I could get ideas about what to write about. And I think that's just kind of the way it is. You know, I, I read... I've read books that are about, you know, writing, and they're like, how do you get your ideas? You know, they don't, that nobody ever has, like, you must do this. They're always just like, yeah, maybe go for a walk, maybe sit out in the park and stare at the clouds, just let your mind wander and see what kind of ideas you can come up with. Um, and I think that's the best way. I've had an idea that I came up with when I was running, and I think it's a really good idea. I like it a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I usually just let my mind wander. I'll have music playing in my headphones uh, normally. Sometimes I'll even put on a podcast and listen to a story. And in that case, my mind doesn't think about, uh, it doesn't wander, I should say. It's thinking generally about what I'm actually listening to. Um, so that, I guess, would make it a non-creative outlet if I'm doing that. But, uh, yeah, that's something I've been trying to do because I mentioned uh, uh, maybe it was last time or the time before about how I'm trying to get a, a Uber feed of the Doomsteep put together. It just has, like, everything that the Doomsteep has done. And to do so, I'm trying to get our outtakes that we've published in uh, organized. And a lot of the outtakes we published well after the shows that they went with were done and so we're not we weren't even sure what shows they were actually supposed to go to so I've been listening to our old shows trying to uh, figure out what these outtakes uh, apply to and, and get them organized again um, so I've been doing that a little too listening to old Doomsteep episodes um, what is the world like at 6 a.m. Rish asks uh, well at 6 a.m. I think it's still dark I actually get up at 6 30 which is a little um, later than 6 a.m. And I usually don't get out the door because I have to wake my son up at 6.30 to get him uh, going to get ready for school. And, uh, and yeah, I usually don't get out the door until almost 7 because, uh, you know, i got to get dressed and i got to do stretched and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty peaceful at that time in the morning, though, I'll tell you. It's, it's quiet. Um people start heading out to work around that time and if I get to the main roads it's fairly busy but back in the neighborhoods it's pretty quiet and peaceful and nice uh, I'll see a few other joggers usually not uh, that early though the other joggers have a tendency to be out later I'm not sure how that works I guess uh, I mostly see more women jogging than men and maybe these women are housewives maybe they aren't they don't uh, work full-time or something so they're able to just go jogging later and not have to worry about being to work or maybe they have a job like mine where they don't have to be there until 10 and so they can jog a slightly later but I can't jog slightly later because I got three kids to get ready for school so um, and one baby to uh, deal with as well who's almost as much work as all three of the kids put together um, 
Do you find other runners slash joggers on the same schedules as you? Rish asks. I do find some. There's a few people that I recognize from day to day uh, that I see out there. They're, I bet their schedule is probably more rigid than mine. I don't know. I'm, I'm slow getting ready sometimes. And so a lot of times I won't even get out the door until like 7.10 or something. Um, that's something that I'll probably have to... Uh, remedy as I'll probably have to start getting up even earlier because pretty soon I'll have to start jogging even more than three miles a day. I'll probably need to be up to four or more miles a day and uh, yeah I'll have to get up early to make that stuff happen. But I do see some people uh, the same time and I see some people again and again. Um, Here's his next question. Do you ever consider having sex with them? Well, there was that one guy. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure I consider having sex with every person, or well, I should say every woman that I see. I don't really consider having sex with guys because I just don't swing that way. But um, I probably consider that every single person I see because, you know, that's just me. I don't know. I. Uh, I still haven't grown up past puberty enough yet. Maybe someday the uh, end of... Is there, there, there's not like a menopause for guys, so there's like no end of puberty. Maybe I'll just get so old that my back will just be like, dude, you're not even seriously thinking about having sex with someone, right? Because seriously, like, you can't even move. <laughs> but I don't know. That's good old Rish. Oh, he's got more for me. When was the last time you crapped your pants? Uh, the last time I crapped my pants, let's see. You know, it's funny he asked this. I think he was telling me he was sick this last week and he was basically blowing chunks out of both ends. At the same time, I think even. I think he had to sit on the toilet and have a bowl in his lap because he couldn't get up and turn around and throw up without blowing chunks down his legs. So that must be why he's... Uh, fixated on this. That's what you get, Rish. I'll tell your dirty story. You're going to make me tell my dirty story. Uh, when did I last crap my pants? You know, this is kind of a funny story. Um, I don't know if this really counts as crapping my pants, but there was this time once, and this was, gosh, 10 years ago. I don't know. It was when I still was in California, and I worked at a different uh, TV station, but I was sitting there, um, uh, on this chair and I farted at least I thought I farted but what I actually did was I sharted <laughs> and I was like oh my goodness and I jumped up and I ran to the bathroom and you know dealt with that um, but the worst part was I came back and there was actually a spot on the chair that I had been sitting on and I think I tried my best to clean it off. But there was a spot on the chair. It was so gross. And uh, yeah, and that, that chair remained for like years afterwards. I think my wife even came and visited me at work one time and saw the spot on the chair. <laughs> she still will bring that up every now and then to me. <laughs> Talk about the spot on the chair. Uh, but that was the last time I crapped my pants, I think. I don't know. I may have done it since then, but I don't think so. Usually you have to be pretty sick to be crapping your pants. Or you have to be a baby, a diaper baby, like um, Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, so, March was the month with the magic spreadsheet. How did you do on it? How many words did you write in March? I did pretty good in March. Much better than I have in other months. I wrote... Uh, I probably wrote seven or eight thousand words in March. I worked on, for the first while, my uh, rewrite of the story that I did called The Tenth Album, and I added several thousand words to that story. I don't know if that's good or not, but I don't know if I added tension to it or not, or whatever it was that I was trying to do, adding drama. But uh, I did that, and then I wrote another story that I started afterwards. Um, I can't remember if I ever came up with a name for that story. I think it may just be called Balloon Story. 
but I wrote another story. It was a horror story about a possessed balloon. Yes, that probably sounds really dumb. And it may well be a really dumb story. I don't know, but I I liked it. I wrote it. It's like a thousand something words, and I finished that story uh, just a little while ago. Me and Rish did a Gets My Goat about the magic spreadsheet, and uh, he made me promise that I would finish that story before the Gets My Goat was edited and came out. And I think Chris just finally started trying to edit it just the other day, so I easily managed to do that. Um, and then just recently, and this is aside the point, this is a more uh, up-to-date development, um, I wrote a whole story on Friday when I was waiting at the car shop. I took my tablet and the little keyboard that it came with, and I just sat there and wrote, and I wrote a, an entire story that day before leaving the car shop. I wrote 1,400-something words, an entire little uh, flash fiction piece. It's one of those stories I think Rish will hate because it starts or it ends right when he wants it to start, probably. It basically is the start of a story. That's my thing, you know, we lead in, oh, something could happen here. The end, um, that's my story that I wrote at the car shop. So I've written three stories since March, and that's a ton for me, way impressive. Um, hopefully I can keep that up. Um, would you have written without the magic spreadsheet? I don't think I would have. The magic spreadsheet really motivated me and Rish's participation in the magic spreadsheet magic spreadsheet also really motivated me. You know, I, I kind of felt and, and sadly I, I wasn't able to keep up with his uh, level of participation because the guy didn't miss a day, man. He was he was he went like three or four weeks before he finally missed his first day and uh, I have a tendency to let life get in the way so I missed a day here and there but I still would get back on the horse much sooner than I normally would have because of the magic spreadsheet and because of reporting it to the world and having Rish come every day and report his to the world and see whether I did mine or not and be able to just get on my case I think that's something that we need to keep up is just, you know, basically reporting it every day. Did you write? Did you not? So that we can get on each other's case that way. I like that. Um, how about this month? What are your writing goals for April slash May? Uh, like I said, this month I wrote one story already, um, and that's pretty good. Uh, my writing goals for April and May are going to be a little uh, interesting. Um, we're trying to sell our house right now, and to, to sell it, there's a lot of little things that need to be done to it. Um, but you add them all up, and they're huge things. I mean, it's, it's a huge thing, one huge thing of a lot of little things. And my wife is seriously on my case to help out more. She's like the fixer-upper, do-it-yourself, or handy man, handy woman type person. She really likes to do that stuff. She watches the Home and Garden television network, uh, you know, the, the trading spaces and the, you know... Property Brothers and all that kind of shows. She loves them and watches them a lot, and she lives to fix up, make adjustments to houses. She's always been, you know, endlessly tinkering with our house. Now we're trying to sell it, so we got to get all these things done, and she wants me to really help her, which means <clears throat> if I'm at home, I don't have any free time. I am working on that stuff, and that's it. I am out of luck otherwise. So if I'm going to write, it's going to have to be on my lunch break or nothing. And recently, work has gotten so freaking busy that I basically eat at my desk and try and work through my lunch break so that 
later on it's not a complete disaster. And I think that's probably a bad habit that I've always had ever since I started in news pretty much. I work through my lunch and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to force myself to take a half hour to do whatever I want to do, you know, to not work on, uh, on news during that time. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to try and do that over the next few months because at least for the next several weeks before we get the house listed, um, it's going to be a lot of work at home, and so I will not have any time at home. I mean, I never had a lot of time at home anyways, because, you know, I've got a baby that has to be taken care of, and so it's almost impossible to do anything if he's awake. Once we get him to sleep at night, then I can maybe work on some, some writing. Um, but I also have lots of other stuff that uh, I have to do, like podcasts and running videos and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'm going to try and do my lunch break during this time of working on the house and uh, see if I can manage to get um, some writing in despite the fact that everything else is busy. So that's my writing goals for April and May. I, maybe I should give myself... I'm going to write 10,000 words in April and May. That is my goal. We'll see how it goes. I already got 1,400 words, uh, so... That's handy. Okay, so what's the next question Rish has for me? Looks like it's, uh, briefly describe the story slash book you're currently working on. Uh, it's funny because I just finished that other story, so unfortunately I'm currently working on nothing, I guess. Um, I was thinking that I massively dropped the ball with that... <clears throat> That story that I, I kind of led off the ankle cast with, where I was talking to everybody about the, uh, the story, which it's starting to seem like maybe it'd be a book, and maybe that's what seemed daunting to me. But uh, uh, Sunny and Gray, I was thinking I need to pick the ball back up on that story and get going on it again, um, and really just get get it set to go, uh, Rish was telling me that if if it were his story, he'd have it done by now if he had a story that developed and that, you know, fully fleshed, fully fleshed out, fully formed from the side of Zeus. Um, so, you know, I think I really need to get going on that. I was actually thinking of doing that, uh, now that I've got this recording device, um, it records a nice enough sound that I might even be able to. I'd like to try this out because my tablet uh, has a, um, a a voice recognition thing where it'll type what you say. And I tried a couple times just to record something. Uh, the, pro the, pro the problem with the tablet is I can't use it uh, like just to dictate into because, or at least not when I'm in the car, because uh, it has to have internet and the tablet just is a Wi-Fi device. So once I drive away from the house, the internet goes away. So I can't use it while I'm driving, but I was wondering if maybe I could just take it, record myself talking a lot on this thing, and then set my tablet up uh, somewhere with speakers and then have it play and see if my tablet can listen to what I recorded. I ought to try that sometime just to see if it works. Maybe I could do that just with this recording that I've made here, um, just to see if the tablet can, can transcribe that all. Because that would be so awesome to use my drive to work to plan story stuff out. I could just speak out loud. I did a, lo a lot of that uh, earlier in the year, and, and I thought it worked out well, except that then I just have this recording that I never listen to, um, and I don't, don't have time to go back and listen to it and transcribe all the stuff myself, um, but maybe if I could just set it up somewhere and just let it go, uh, that would be rad. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's what I think I need to get back onto, is start working on that one. I've got so much 
done on it so far that to let it die just seems like a tragedy. Um, Rish's next question is, would you rather have sex with a supermodel, say Kate Upton, who's been severely burned with acid, or an over-the-hill former crack whore that remains acid-free? Um, you know, that's interesting, the acid thing. <laughs> very, uh, very interesting and in-depth question. It's a good thing that Rish is here for me to make me hit the hard subjects. Uh, you know, I suppose the, the thing about a former crack whore is you don't know what might come along with it. Crack whores have a tendency to have all sorts of diseases that uh, could haunt you for the rest of your life, whereas the supermodel who's been burned by acid may not look so supermodel-y anymore, but she's probably clean of diseases. So I would go burned acid burned supermodel. Um, Rish asks, what's the scariest movie you've seen in the past 10 years? Hmm. That's pretty hard. You know, it's funny because I don't... I'm not a, a scary movie guy. Rish is totally into scary movies and into getting scared. Scary movies have a tendency not to scare me. They do kind of... I do get squeamish from the violence and the, you know, the, the hacking and slashing and pain causing, but it, that's not stuff that scares me. It just kind of makes me sick to my stomach and feel ill. It's almost like watching news footage or something of, of you know, I guess you could say the, the Boston uh, Marathon bombing or something like that, you know, that kind of stuff. It makes me feel ill, makes me feel sick to my stomach, but I'm not scared, per se. So what would the scariest movie be? Um, gosh, I don't know. Uh, maybe that one that I saw that had Hannah Montana doing the voice. <laughs> Bolt? No, I never saw a Bolt, so that, that's not a uh, honest answer. I'm lying. I'm lying to you folks. I don't know what the scariest movie was. I'm sorry, Rish. I'm going to have to leave you. Uh, maybe the scariest movie I saw was Cabin in the Woods, although I didn't really find it that scary. I just thought it was cool, but it was a little. It did make me a little ill when there was killing and hacking and slashing. What's the scariest story you've written? Uh, I think the scariest story that I wrote is probably the one, it's called The Monitor, I believe. And uh, it's about this guy who has a new baby and over the baby monitor, he hears a voice. And the voice says, I'm coming for your son. And he freaks out and he runs into his baby, because, you know, the baby monitors are like walkie-talkies. So this has got to be coming from his baby's room. He runs in there and there is no one there. It's a completely empty room. And uh, over the course of the story, he discovers that he his house is haunted and the uh, ghost has a, a thing for babies and wants to kill his baby. Um, I thought that was a pretty scary story. I think that may be one of the best scary ideas I've come up with uh, in all my days. Oh, that was a very loud truck. You guys all got to hear that. Okay, uh, looks like Rish has one last question here. Uh, we'll take a look at it. It says, uh, if a messenger from the future came to you and said, I'm a big fan of your books. How many have you written in 2013? Oh, and sorry about your family. And then went back to 2021. 
how would that affect you? Uh, I would be really irritated with that messenger, to tell you the truth. Like, why did he just suddenly appear, say that crap, and then disappear, you know? If you're going to only be there long enough to say that small amount of stuff, you better um, plan out what you're going to say a little better. Uh, but that would be cool to hear that I had finally gotten it together enough to have books and to have a big fan of those books. Um, but yeah, the whole family thing, what does that turn it into? Um, would I be excited? It, it, does that mean that my family was destroyed in some sort of accident or something, and by means of that, I, I, you know, without my family around or something, I was able to, uh, to get it together and right? Because I wouldn't want that. I don't want that. I would rather never write again and have my family than the other way around. Um, but if they're not connected, then I guess, you know, that's, it sucks, but it's fine. I don't know. Is there any way for anything to be not connected in life? Um, yeah, I don't know. That That's an interesting question. Uh, but yeah, I would like to have books and have enough books that I could have a big fan, but not at the expense of my family. So there's my answer. And Rish's last, number 16, says, I'm on the job, you big nay Bob. You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> All right, Rish, thank you so very much for sending over these questions, you big nay Bob. Um... <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of the Ankle Cast, a giant sized man thing episode of the Ankle Cast, because this has got to be what, like twice or three times the length of what I usually do. I recorded all the way to my sister's house, stopped the recording, started it again, and recorded all the way to work, then stopped the recording, started it again when I went to lunch, stopped the recording while I ordered stuff for lunch, and then started it again and recorded on my way home from, or my way back to work from ordering that stuff. So that's a lot of recording. I'm going to have some editing that I'm going to have to do to uh, to get this together to make it uh, all one recording, but that's all right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm a writer. I swear I am, <laughs> and I will do writing this month. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. <laughs>